Imagine a world where you can develop software seamlessly from any device and that too with the power of AI at your fingertips. Yes, that's the vision behind Google's Project IDX which is a revolutionary cloud-based development platform. Project IDX aims to break down the barriers between the local and cloud development offering a unified experience that empowers the developers to work smarter, not harder. So whether you are building web app, mobile apps or full stack applications, Project IDX provides a comprehensive set of tools and features to streamline your workflow. Once you sign in into the Google IDX, then you will land on a page which is actually the dashboard of the Project IDX. Here on the right hand side, you have different options. Either you can select a new template to start your development or you can also work in your existing code base by importing a repository from the GitHub. So in this video, I'm going to be using a template in order to create the project. So I'm going to click on see all templates and it will take me to a page like this. Here on the left hand side, you have five different categories for different types of applications that you can create. And then on the right hand side, you have different frameworks available for each type of technology. So if you want to create a web app, you have all of these app templates right here. If you want to go with the back end, you have all these options. If you want to create a mobile app, then we have the Flutter. But right now I want to create an AI based application. So I'm going to click on AI and these are the two templates which are currently available. So it is not providing support for the open AI API, but it is only providing the support for the Gemini API and the Palm API. So in this video, I'm going to be using the Gemini API in order to create a dermatologist diagnostic assistant. So once you select the template, now the next thing is to create the workspace. You have to provide a name to your workspace. And then for the environment, if you click on the drop down menu, you have multiple options. If you want to have a JavaScript web app, then you can select it. If you want to have a Python web app with a Flask, you can select this option. But I want to have a Python notebook. So if you want to create a Python based application, then you have to select the Python notebook or the Python web app. And if you want to use LangChain with it, you can check this checkbox, but I'm going to leave it unchecked and simply click on create button. Once you do that, it will take some time for setting up the workspace, building the environment and finalizing everything. So I'm going to come back once all of this is done. All right. So now everything has been loaded and you can see that it also set up the requirements which were present in this pre-created file called the requirements.txt. And upon creating the environment, all of the required dependencies which are present in the requirements.txt file have been successfully installed. And since we created a Python notebook, this is how the interface looks like. So let's quickly go through the features. So by looking at it, you can see that the interface of the Google project IDX looks somewhat similar to the VS code. On the left hand side, we have the file explorer in which you can open different folders. You can add new file, you can add new folders. Then here you have option to search it for any file. You have the option for the source control in which you can connect it to any of your repository and it will provide you continuous integration. Then we have the option for run and deployment like we had for the VS code. Then we have extensions in which you can add any extension that you want. We have a part for the testing and it also provides a built-in support to the Firebase. And in addition to all of these features, the Google's project IDX also provides you a built-in AI assistant. So you don't need to add any extension like OD for code completion, code generation, etc. You have a pre-built AI assistant that will help you in making your development much easier and your performance much more better. So here is the template in which it is creating a baking application with the Gemini API. So in order to run it, you simply have to provide your API key right here and it will perform all of the operations present inside the notebook. And then finally, it will provide you output like this. But I want to create my own application, so I'm going to add a new file for it. But before that, I'm going to click quickly show you this .idx folder that contains dev.nix file. This dev.nix file is used to define the environment configurations for each workspace, which means that all the configuration information about your workspace and the requirement dependencies will be stored inside this dev.nix file. And you can also share it with any of your team members in order to have the same environment configurations. So if you see that it has already installed the Python pip packages for installing the dependencies, here we have the extension, which is the Jupyter and the Python. Then 
on the create function it creates a virtual environment by running these commands as i've already shown you that once the environment was created this command was automatically run and all the requirements and all the dependencies were executed now i am going to show you how you can create a new application in it for that i'm going to create a file in this file i am going to be creating a streamlit application using the gemini vision pro model that will actually be a dermatology diagnostic assistant in which the user will be able to enter any image of any skin issue or any skin disease that the person might have and this application is going to predict or is going to tell the patient that what skin infection he or, he or she might have so if i go to the requirements.txt file here we have the pip auto pip the google generative ai and below but i'm gonna be needing a few other requirements as well for that i'm gonna open a new terminal and it will be done in the same way as it is done in the vs code so if you don't know this you simply have to press ctrl shift p and then on the bar you have to type create the terminal and then once you hit enter a new terminal will be created for you and then inside this terminal you are gonna have to run the command pip install streamlet because i'm gonna be using streamlet for my application and i'm gonna be using another library called pathlib so i'm gonna install both of these at once all right so once the requirements have been added now i'm gonna head back to my test.py file and Inside it, firstly, you can see that it is showing the option that press Control plus I to ask the IDX AI to do something. So it is the virtual AI assistant which is built in, in the project IDX, which you can use in order to perform code generation, code completion, code refactoring, testing, and so on. So I'm going to start the application by importing the required libraries from the packages. So I'm going to be using Streamlit, temp file, OS Pathlib, and Google Generative AI, which contains the API for the Gemini app. Then I'm going to use the genai.configure function to set the API key for the Gemini model. And don't worry, I'm going to revoke this key before uploading the video. After that, I'm going to start by defining my main function. So firstly, inside this main function, I am using the streamlet to add an image which is actually the logo of our company. And I'm adding the title to my page, which is the dermatology diagnostic assistant. After that, I want the user to be able to upload an image. So I'm going to be using the streamlit.file uploader. These are the type of the files that it will be able to accept. And since we want to actually get the image, for that we want to have its path. So I'm going to be using the temp file to make a temporary directory. And then I'm going to save the file which the user have uploaded inside the temporary directory. And then I'm going to get its path. So this path variable is actually going to get the temporary directories path and the image name and we'll join them in order to create a path for the file which the user have entered and we are going to use this path in order to have access to the image then after getting the path of the image i am creating a button called submit and if the button is submitted then i am going to call a function called generate response in inside which i am going to provide the path as the parameter and this function will generate the response for us and we will simply display this response using the streamlit.write function. Right now, we do not have this function which will perform the actual processing of getting the response from the Gemini model. So let's go ahead and create this model. So above the main function, I'm going to create a new function called generate response. And inside this function, I'm going to pass a single parameter. I'm going to call it image file. So the first part of this function is to set up the model. And for that, we are going to provide it certain values. So if you don't want to write the code by yourself, you can always use the Google AI Studio in order to do that for you. So let's head to the Google AI Studio. And for the model type, you have to select the freeform model because we want to use the Gemini Pro Vision model. And you have to select the model from here. It will allow you to upload any image and provide it the prompt. So if I upload an image and I prompt it, identify the disease this person might have based on the provided image and also provide the details of the disease. Run this and it will use the Gemini 1.0 provision model in order to analyze the image and then provide us the information which is being depicted in the image. So it says that the provided images of a person suffering from this disease, it is also known as ringworm and it is also provided us the details. So once you are satisfied with the response, you have to click on the get code button 
and it will provide you code in the required language. So you can copy this code from here. It will provide you the generation config, the safety settings and how to initialize the model. So I'm going to copy this from right here and I'm going to make a few changes to the code in order to use it. So here is the entire code, which is the code generation config, the safety settings. Then we have the model in which the model name is a Gemini 1.0 provision latest. We have the generation config inside this variable, the safety settings. Then here in the Google AI studio, it was validating that the image is present, but we know that the image is present because we extracted its path. So I'm going to leave this part and I copied this part from right here and pasted it here. And if you can see that here in the data type, it was path passing the path and the image name to be image0.jpg in order to get its path. But since we have generated the path and passed it as the function parameter, so instead of that, I'm going to provide it right here. And this image file is actually the file which is coming as the function parameter. And this is actually the path which we have generated by using the temp file and storing it to a temporary directory. All right, so once we have the image, now I'm going to create a list of the image parts that have a meme type that the type of the image is going to be a JPG or an image. Then the data is actually the path of the image file and I'm going to read the bytes of it. Then the next thing that you need to create is the prompt parts in which you have to provide the image parts and the prompt that you want to run on the uploaded image. Here is the same prompt which I passed to the Google AI Studio. Okay. So this is the same code and then after that I am using the model.generate content function inside which I am passing the prompt parts. And then once this function is executed, it is going to generate the response and we are simply going to print the response.text. So now inside this main function, once the button is clicked, we are going to call the generate response function. We are going to provide it the path of the image which the user have entered and it will generate the response using the Gemini Pro Vision model. And the response will be saved inside this variable, which we are simply printing. Now, the only thing that is left is to run the application. So I'm going to once again open the terminal and I'm going to run the command streamlit run and then provide the name of the file, which in my case is test.py. Hit enter and it will open a new browser window for you having your application. So here is the logo which I have added. This is the title, which is a dermatology diagnostic assistant. I've added a few emojis right here and this is the file uploader using which we will upload the files of the patients having some skin issues and this application will predict what might be the issue. So now let's go ahead and test it. Firstly, I'm going to click on the browse files and I'm going to add an image right here. Once the image is uploaded, simply click on the submit button and you will get your answer in a matter of few seconds. Okay, so you can see that the disease this person might have is the acne vulgaris. And we also ask it in the prompt to provide us the details of the disease. So here is the detail of the disease as well. It is providing us what is the disease, what are the symptoms along with the treatment and the prevention. So this means that it has correctly identified the disease which was depicted in the image. So now let's test it with another image. This time I'm going to add the image of this which is actually melanoma. And let's see if it is able to identify it or not. Alright, so the response is generated and the answer is melanoma, which is absolutely correct. It has provided us the description of the disease along with the symptoms and the treatment. So that's really cool that it has successfully identified the disease in just a matter of few seconds by looking at the image. Now let's test it out with an other image. The image is actually showing a skin disease called vitiligo in which a person develops white spots on various parts of the body. Open the image and click on the submit button. All right, the response is generated and you can see that it has identified the disease to be vitiligo, which is a chronic skin condition which the pigment producing cells in the skin are destroyed. And it has also provided us that there is no cure, but the treatment is to use all of these things. This application was created in just a matter of few minutes using the Google's project IDA. So now I'm going to quickly show you how you can actually use the inbuilt AI assistant for different purposes. So if you have the code, I'm going to select all of this and I want to have comments added to this code. For that, I'm going to select control I, the assistant will appear and I'll ask it to add comments to this code. And once you hit enter, you will see that in just a matter of few seconds, it will add comments in all of the lines of the code 
which we have provided to it. So you can always go ahead and accept or discard the changes, but I'm happy with the comments. So I'm going to accept it. Now we have the comments along with all the parts of our code here. It says the important SC libraries. We have the API key. We have the function to generate the response and etc. etc. And in this way, you can use this built-in AI assistant in order to perform code completion, code refactoring, and code generation as well. So I'll highly encourage you to get yourself registered for the waitlist in order to join the Google's project idea. And it is an amazing tool that will allow you to create applications without using the resources of your personal computer. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.